Ever fired up your favorite game only to find it stuttering, lagging, or just not running as smoothly as you'd hoped? Well, you're not alone. Many gamers face performance issues, but actually pinpointing the cause isn't always well, straightforward. Is it your CPU holding you back, or is your GPU struggling to keep up? Welcome to the world of bottlenecks, the silent performance killers that can literally turn your gaming experience from amazing to, well, a frustrating nightmare. In this video, we're going to be deep diving into the world of CPU and GPU bottlenecks in games. We'll explore exactly what they are, how to spot them, and most importantly, how to fix them. Whether you're a seasoned PC builder or just starting to dip your toes into the world of PC gaming, understanding bottlenecks is crucial for getting the most out of your system. But before we get into that, here's a quick word for this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never going to be an eSports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son. It is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So let's start by breaking down what we mean by bottlenecks. In the world of PC gaming, a bottleneck occurs when one component in your system can't keep up with the others, essentially becoming the weakest link in the chain. It's like having a sports car with a lawnmower engine. No matter how great the rest of the car is, that engine is going to hold everything back. And when it comes to gaming, we're primarily concerned with two types of bottlenecks, CPU and GPU. Now, a CPU bottleneck happens when your processor can't feed data to your graphics card fast enough. This can result in lower frame times, stuttering, and inconsistent performance, especially in CPU intensive games or scenarios with lots of AI or physics calculations going on. On the flip side, a GPU bottleneck occurs when your graphics card can't render frames quickly enough to keep up with the data that the CPU is actually sending. This often manifests as lower frame rates, particularly uh, higher resolutions or with more demanding graphics settings. And that's where things get kind of really interesting and where a lot of misconceptions actually come into play. Some people think that any bottleneck is bad and that you should always strive for a perfectly balanced system. The reality is just a bit more nuanced as in most gaming scenarios, you'll actually want to have a slight GPU bottleneck. This ensures that your graphics card is working at its full potential, giving you the best possible visual experience. The key is understanding where your bottlenecks are and whether they're severe enough to actually impact your gaming experience significantly. It's all about finding the sweet spot where your components work together to deliver the performance that, well, frankly, you're after. So now that we've actually got a bit of a handle on what bottlenecks are for both CPU and GPU, let's talk about how game engines actually factor into the equation because, well, it's quite a big one. Game engines are the underlying software frameworks that developers use to create games, and they can have quite a significant impact on how your CPU and GPU are actually utilized. Now, some of the most popular game engines out there include Unreal Engine, Unity, and Frostbite. And each of these engines have their own way of handling CPU and GPU workloads, which can directly influence where bottlenecks might occur in your system. For instance, Unreal Engine, and especially Unreal Engine 5, is known for features that enhance visual fidelity, but it can often be quite demanding on GPUs, especially when it comes to features like ray tracing. Unity, on the other hand, is often praised for its versatility and can scale well across a range of hardware configurations. Then we have Frostbite, which is created by DICE and used in many EA titles, and that's known for pushing both CPU and GPU boundaries with its complex physics simulations and visual effects. And I guess the best example of that and where it's most popular is in the Battlefield franchise of games. Understanding kind of how different engines stress your system can actually help you anticipate potential bottlenecks. For example, if you're playing a game built on Unreal Engine 5, you might expect more GPU intensive workloads, especially if features like Nanite and Lumen are in play. It's also worth noting that many games allow you to tweak engine specific settings, and that can actually be a godsend. These can range from simple graphics presets to more advanced options like draw distance, physics quality, or even CPU slash GPU workload distribution in some cases. And experimenting with these settings can actually help you find 
the right balance for your particular hardware configuration. Remember, the goal isn't to eliminate bottlenecks entirely. That's practically, well, impossible. Instead, it's about understanding how different games and different game engines interact with your hardware so you can make informed decisions about settings within the games or, if it really comes to it, potential upgrades. All right, so let's get into a little bit of detective work of identifying CPU bottlenecks. How do you know if your processor is the one holding your game in performance back? Well, there's actually a few telltale signs to you know, watch out for. First, keep an eye on your frame rates. It's kind of the most important one, I'd say. If you're getting lower FPS than you'd expect, especially in scenes with lots of NPCs or complex physics or large open worlds, that could point to a CPU bottleneck. You might also notice stuttering or inconsistent frame times, even when your average FPS looks pretty decent. So it can actually kind of throw you off a little bit too. Gut feelings are good, but well, they're not always enough. We need hard data. And this is where monitoring tools come in handy. Programs like MSI Afterburner, HW Info, or even the built-in Windows Task Manager can give you valuable insights as to what's going on. Now, what you're actually looking for is high CPU usage, so around 90 to 100%, coupled with lower GPU usage. If your CPU is maxed out while your GPU is loafing at around 60 to 70% utilization, well, that's a pretty clear sign of a CPU bottleneck. For us, we use tools like CapFrameX, which allows us to see all of this data in real time. And honestly, it's extremely valuable to have. So if you haven't already checked that out, I'd advise doing so. Now, let's talk about game settings that can really put the squeeze on your CPU. Draw distance is probably the biggest one. The further out your CPU has to calculate what's going on in the game world, the harder it has to work. AI complexity, physics simulations, and the number of NPCs or objects in a scene can also hit your CPU hard too. In some games, you might find settings specifically labeled as CPU intensive. And those are, I guess, the ones to actually watch out for if you're trying to maybe lighten the load on your processor. But not every game has this, and it can be a bit frustrating if it doesn't have these particular settings. As for game genres, well, strategy games, MMOs, and open world titles tend to be the more CPU bound based games. These types of titles often have to keep track of numerous entities and complex systems simultaneously, which can really tax your processor. Remember, identifying a CPU bottleneck is just the first step. Once you've actually pinpointed the issue and you know what's going on, then you can start looking at ways to address it. So if you're now at the point where you've identified a CPU bottleneck in your system, what now? Well, buckle up, because this is where things get a little bit tricky. CPU bottlenecks aren't always as straightforward as they seem. It's not just about you know, your processor being too slow. There's a whole web of factors at play. So let's start with Ryzen processors, particularly the non-X3D variants. You might think you need a beefier CPU, but hold that thought. With these chips, the bottleneck could actually be your RAM. These variants are notorious for being memory hungry and faster, tighter timed RAM could actually give you that performance boost that you're after without the need to spend more money and actually swap out your processor. Because, well, if you don't have the money, are you just led to believe that this is it? So at least you have options. If however, you are running an Intel chip or another processor type such as an AMD X3D CPU, the story might be a little bit different. Here, single core performance, or what we call IPC, instructions per clock, could actually be the culprit. Games that aren't great at using multiple cores, which is actually the vast majority, will lean heavily on single core performance. Then in these cases, a newer CPU with better IPC could be just what you need. But here's the kicker. Figuring out exactly what's holding you back isn't always clear cut. You might see your CPU utilization maxed out and think, aha, definite CPU bottleneck but not so fast. Unless the game you're playing is a game like Helldivers 2, which can scale across multiple cores, that CPU utilization number might be painting a misleading picture. And this is kind of where it all gets a bit confusing. So I know what you're asking, what can you actually do? Well, again, it's time to put on your detective hat as you'll need to do some digging. Check your RAM speeds, look at per core utilization, maybe even dive into some benchmarks comparing your CPU single core performance against newer models. It's a bit of work, sure, but trust me, it's worth it to make sure you're addressing the real issue at hand. 
And let's not forget about what's going on outside of your game. Background processes, they can be sneaky little performance thieves. Video encoding, file compression, even that chat app like Discord you've got running, they can all eat away at CPU resources. Even, you know, other things going on that you might necessarily not think were causing any issues. But this is where Windows game mode can be a kind of handy ally, helping to schedule tasks correctly, especially if you have something like a Ryzen 7950X3D or a similar dual CCD processor. Because, well, as we know, straight out of the box performance isn't always great. So that can really come in handy to deal with that side of things. Now, the bottom line, CPU bottlenecks are complex beasts. They're not always solved by just throwing more cores or clock speed or even money at the problem. Sometimes it's about faster RAM, sometimes it's about better single core performance, and sometimes it's about cleaning up background processes. The key is to approach the problem holistically by understanding your specific hardware and then be willing to do a bit of sleuthing to actually find out what the real culprit is. So CPUs are one thing, but let's now tackle GPU bottlenecks. Now the approach here is similar to dealing with CPU bottlenecks, but with a few key differences. First up, hardware upgrades. If your GPU is consistently the weakest link in your system, upgrading to a more powerful graphics card can work wonders. Just make sure your power supply can handle the new card and that your CPU won't then become the new bottleneck. There's no point in pairing a top of the line GPU, like an RTX 4090, with a processor that just can't keep up. Now, before you start eyeing up that shiny new graphics card, however, let's talk about in-game settings that we alluded to before. This is where you can often get the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to GPU performance. Start with the heavy hitters first, which are resolution, texture quality, shadow quality, and anti-aliasing. Actually lowering these settings can significantly reduce the load on your GPU. Also, features like ray tracing and DLSS or FSR if you're using an AMD card can also have a massive impact on performance compared to running them natively. So kind of take some time, experiment with these if your game and your GPU actually supports them. One last thing to consider sometimes, what looks like a GPU bottleneck might actually be thermal throttling. So if your GPU is overheating, of course it's gonna reduce its clock speeds to make sure it's not hitting its thermal delta, leading to reduced performance. Make sure your case has good airflow and consider cleaning out any dust that might have accumulated on your GPU's heatsink and fans. But again, that's only one small part of the puzzle and can instead, well, go a lot, lot deeper. So what about more, let's say, specific issues? A peculiar issue that NVIDIA GPU owners might encounter, especially if you're pairing a high-end graphics card with an older processor, comes down to NVIDIA's GPU driver overhead. And you may have heard about this before. And well, in all honesty, it's a sneaky one that can often masquerade as a GPU limitation when it's actually your processor that's struggling to keep up. When you've got a beefy NVIDIA GPU, say, an RTX 4090, paired with a relatively older or weaker CPU, you might notice that your performance isn't quite what you'd expect. You might think, hey, I've got this high-end GPU that I spent a lot of money on, why aren't my frames through the roof? Or even, why are they the exact same as my old GPU? Well, it turns out that NVIDIA's GPU drivers have a bit of a problem where they are held back by old processors. This overhead can become a bottleneck, limiting your GPU's potential and holding back your overall performance. Note that this is an NVIDIA specific issue though, and if you're running a Radeon GPU, you're largely in the clear. AMD's approach to driver implementation doesn't typically cause the same level of overhead, even in mismatched hardware scenarios. It's one of those quirks that can make hardware pairing a bit more complicated in the NVIDIA ecosystem. So I guess just be mindful of that. But no matter the scenario, having data that you can refer to is always going to be the first thing to look at. So get some software installed like CapFrameX that will show you temperatures, utilization, clock speeds. And this goes for both CPU and GPU because it really can give you an insight into what's really going on. And then that can help you to find a solution for it. Now, if you have that info and you're still stuck, then you can always come over to our Discord where we'll be able to help you analyze exactly what's going on and maybe even steer you in the right direction to make it better. Whether that means buying new memory, tweaking game settings, doing something else, updating drivers, or ultimately it could actually mean buying a new CPU or buying a new GPU. So yeah, for now, that's gonna wrap this one up. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this deep dive into various aspects of bottlenecks that could actually be holding back your performance on your PC. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.